Okay, so now before we continue into the cell mediated immune response and also uh, the antibody mediated immune response, we are going to talk about the T cells and the APC first, which are responsible for both. Uh, APC and T cells are actually responsible for both cell mediated immunity as well as the antibody mediated immunity. Okay? So let me summarize the entire process in general. So I'll let you guys have the overall picture first before we go into the detail. Okay, so I'm going to draw out this, the, uh, the. Okay, now let's look at this immune response, okay, in general. Now be careful when you use the word immune response. Huh? When you use the word immune response, generally you're referring to the third lines of the uh, defense mechanism. First line, second line, we don't use the word immune response. Huh? Okay, so immune response, we know that they are adaptive. They are very specific. They only target a specific uh, pathogens with a specific antigen. Even sometimes you can see that, for example, flu virus, influenza virus. Influenza virus, you have so many kinds of influenza virus. So they must have the same antigen, only our body can recognize them. Are you clear? If they keep on changing their surface non self antigen, so basically our immune system won't be able to detect that. Eh? And analogically, you should know that if a person keep on changing the face, go for plastic surgery, no matter how, you won't be able to recognize them. Are you clear? Okay, so same goes to this antigen, sorry, the non-self antigen. So how we start the entire process? So we started first with the presence of a pathogen. Okay, a pathogen now. Okay, we have a pathogen. So this pathogen actually do have the surface antigen cell surface antigen. So this surface antigen, we term it as a non-self antigen. So it must be non-self. Okay. So the whole thing is called as a pathogen. So for example, this one can be a bacteria. Okay, it can be a bacteria. Okay, so this is a non-self antigen. Here, one cell antigen. So what actually happens here is this bacterial is again okay, phagocytosis take place. Are you clear? So engulfed by the macrophage. So this is a macrophage. So what macrophage actually do here? Okay. So first thing, macrophage carry out phagocytosis first. So you need to know what is the process. Huh? So macrophage basically they are going to move nearer towards, okay, move towards the pathogen, extend the cytoplasmic projection, and this cytoplasmic projection, uh, projection fused together and gulf the bacteria, forming this okay phagocytic vesicle. So due to the phagocytosis, then they form the phago. Cytic vesicle. Okay, so this phagocytic vesicle fuse okay, with the lysosome. So hydrolytic enzyme is released. Okay. So this hydrolytic enzyme is going to hydrolyze pathogen partially. Okay, so hydrolyze pathogen okay, partially. Okay, so we use the word partially because macrophage is a type of APC, antigen presenting cells. If they hydrolyze completely, for example, antigens generally, they are protein, they are glycoprotein. So it means protein, you break it down totally to form the amino acid, what you're going to present. You cannot present the glycine, you cannot present the, 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 the proline because those are essential, okay? Uh, they are amino acid in our body. You don't present them, they don't serve as antigen. Are you clear? So you have to, okay, break down this pathogen partially so that they can present the, okay, antigen. So when you break down this way, so the very important next part actually process. Okay, macrophage okay, process and display 
or present the antigen. Okay, by using MHC class 2 protein. Okay, by using MHC class 2 protein. Sorry, a bit slow. Okay. So what actually happened now, you can see that the formations of the uh, phagocytic vesicle and lysosome. So inside you have the bacterial. So the bacterial with the non-self antigen. Are you clear? So the release of the hydrolytic enzyme going to hydrolyze the pathogens eh, partially. And this antigen, non-self antigen, will be displayed. Okay, so for example, I'll do it this way. And display. So this one is the MHC class 2. Okay. And the green color is the non-self antigen. So we have already put it here. The green color is a non-self antigen. Okay. So the antigen presentation in this case is, is a crucial, it's very, very crucial to initiate okay, the immune response. Are you clear? To initiate the immune response. So how to initiate the immune response? So we need to depend on one of the cells known as helper T cell. Okay. So what actually happened now, the helper T cells, okay, with the large nucleus, so I say TH, TH stands for helper T cells. So helper T cells will have what we call the T cells receptor have the antigen binding site that complementary to the shape of the antigens that presented by the APC. So macrophage now becomes the APC antigen presenting cells. So this is helper T cells. So what actually happened? Why helper T cells? Helper T cells know where to buy. Basically, helper T cells do have another receptor called core receptor. They can interact with the MHC class two protein. So this is called known as CD four core receptor. So CD4 co-receptor recognize MHC class 2 bind now they form a complex now. Can you see that? They form a complex. So this complex now have to make these helper T cells to be activated. So how to make these helper T cells activated? So now macrophage release cytokine to activate. Okay, so release cytokine. So this cytokine is interleukin-1. Okay, this cytokine interleukin-1. So the idea here is to activate the helper T cells. Are you clear? So once you form the complex like this, so generally helper T cell is activated. So once the helper T cell is activated, okay, so what you're going to do? Yeah. So helper T cell once become activated. Okay, so step one. So because of the cytokine, eh, due to the release of the interleukin one, so the function interleukin ones now activate helper T cells. The correct helper T cells, not any helper T cells, but helper T cells with the T cell receptor. Okay, this is T cell receptor that have the antigen binding site complementary to the antigen presented by the macrophage. Are you clear? Okay. So activates the helper T cells. Once the helper T cell is activated, so now helper T cells or T helper cells, it doesn't matter. Okay. So helper T cells now secrete cytokine. So this cytokine actually is interleukin 2. Okay, this cytokine is known as interleukin 2. Are you clear? So now, what is the function of this interleukin 2? So helper T cells now release. Okay. Helper T cell releases a cytokine. So what is the function of this cytokine? Okay, what is the function of cytokines? So first, 
Okay, the rule of the cytokine. Number one, this cytokine is going to okay, target macrophages. Now, students always confuse about macrophages. These macrophages are those that haven't carried out phagocytosis yet. Are you clear? So this cytokine actually will activate and actually uh, uh, what could it say? attract the macrophage to go to the infected sites. Are you clear? Okay, so that macrophage now become more activated. We activate macrophage. Okay, activate the macrophages. When activated, so the macrophages already, this cytokine activate the macrophages. So now at a macrophage carry out phagocytosis more vigorously. Are you clear? It become more vigorously. So it means that if they carry out phagocytosis more vigorously, so basically we increase the rate of antigen presenting phenomenon. So it means that we're going to have more APC. Am I right? Okay, they don't simply carry out phagocytosis only. They carry out phagocytosis at the same time also, they have to make sure that they display the antigen, the non-self antigen. Are you clear? Okay. So macrophage. Number two. Hey, cytokines. Huh? Number two, the effect on to the helper T cells. Okay, no point you have increased the number of APC, but without increasing the number of helper T cells. Are you clear? Okay, so you have more APC, I have more helper T cells, so that I can, for more complexes, release even more cytokine and to stimulate more macrophages. Can you see that this is a positive feedback loop? What does it mean, positive feedback loop? One action that we have done, we increase the parameter of what we want. Are you clear? Can you see that? Okay. Basically, you have this amount. You top out. You amplify the signal in this case. You want to amplify the signal. Okay. When you want to amplify signal, this you have to use a positive feedback mechanism. Are you clear? It's totally different from negative feedback. Negative feedback means one parameter going up, you try to bring it down. But in this case, when one parameter, cytokine is released, cytokine release make more helper T cells. Helper T cells release more Cytokine, when the more cytokine, I have more helper T cells. Can you see that? Are you clear? So therefore, this is how effective our immune response is because the, the involvement of cells is not one or two cells or 10 cells, 20 cells, but a lot, a lot, thousands of the cells that involve at the same time because you amplify the signal through this cytokine. Are you clear? They are growth factor. So what does the cytokine do? Okay, or this cytokine can do on helper T cells. So basically, first, they activate, okay, the helper T cells. Not all helper T cells, but the correct clone of helper T cells. They activate helper T cells, okay? So that the more helper T cells interact or to bind. Okay, with the antigen or non self antigen presented by macrophages. So, what is the effect here? What is the effect? We're going to increase more, increase cytokine release now. Can you see that? Because of interaction, cytokine release. So, when cytokine release, you engage more. Okay. Uh, macrophages, you engage more helper T cells, okay? So, the activated helper T cells, we have more helper T cells, right? So, how we can produce more helper T cells? How we can get more helper T cells? So, activated helper T cells will undergo what we call the clonal expansion. Okay, so what's mean clonal expansion? Clonal expansion basically is a mitosis and cell division. 
Okay, mitosis and cell division. So make more. So basically, you have one helper T cell, you get two. From two, you get four. Okay, so out of these four, some of them, we're going to release cytokine. Some of them may turn into memory helper P cells. Are you clear? Again, okay. some of them say because help act, uh, activated help T cells. So this activated helper T cells release cytokine. Okay. Clear so far? Clear. So this is the second row. Now, third row. The third row, the effect actually on the cytotoxic T cell. So again, same thing. They're going to activate cytotoxic T cell. So once activated, cytotoxic T cells now will undergo clonal expansion. Okay, clonal expansions. So it means that again, for the clonal expansions, some of the cells become the activated cytotoxic T. Some of them will remain okay, in the blood for a long period of time because they are forming what we call the memory cytotoxic T cells. So what is the functions of activated cytotoxic T cells? Now let us look at this. We do know that the, if this is a somatic cells or we call it infected cell, Okay, infected cells. So we have the nucleus of the infected cells. Now, infected cells also have the ability to present the antigen, but they use MHC class one to present the, the antigen. Are you clear? Okay, so this is MHC class one. So what will happen here is our lymphocyte, cytotoxic T lymphocyte, I use a TC, stand for cytotoxic T cells. So cytotoxic T cells will have the TCR, that complementary, the shape of TCR, T cell receptor, that complementary to the shape of antigen presented by infected cells by using MHC class one. So why help a cytotoxic T cell not help cells? Because cytotoxic T cells will have the core receptor. Okay, core receptor, CD4. Oh, CD8, sorry, CD8 core receptor. So this CD8 core receptor will recognize MHC class one. When this complex is formed, okay, when this complex is formed, now you can see that cytotoxic T cells going to release toxic substances or toxic chemical. So for example, hydrogen peroxide, for example, perforin. So what is the role of this? So generally they're going to lyse. Okay, these hydrogen peroxide and perforin going to lyse, so they can lyse the infected cell. They can lyse the cancer cells. And foreign uh, graph, or we call it as a tissue graph, tissues or organ graph, through transplant. Okay, so the idea to lyse the infected cells basically is to release. Okay, to release the pathogen. Once you release the pathogens already, so these pathogens can be targeted by anti 
body, which will be involved. Okay, sorry. Let me draw it. So this pathogen will be targeted by antibody. Are you clear? So if you don't expose them, if you don't expose them, then no chance for us to actually kill them, clear not, because they are actually inside the this pathogen hide themselves inside the your infected cells. Are you clear? So generally we want to lyse the cells so that we can release the pathogen so they can be targeted by antibody. So the process involved here. Okay, is termed as a cell mediated immunity or immune response. Are you clear? It's termed as cell mediated immune response. Clear? Okay. Again. Okay. Yes, only this part. When the this no no entire thing lah basically involves cytotoxic T cell, how cytotoxic T cell kill the infected cells. Are you clear? It's known as cell mediated immune response. Okay. Now, just now we talk about the antibody, right? So how to produce this antibody? Then we have to look at another process here, okay, involve the B cells. Okay, so number four, targets the B cells. So again, the cytokine can activate B cells. Are you clear? With the appropriate, right? So the activation of B cell a bit special. Activation of the B cells require antigen and cytokine. Okay, so please to be careful, eh? both of them. I will show you guys what is the activation of B cells later. Okay, so activation of B cells require antigens and also cytokine. Okay. So once this B cell is activated, so activated B cells will undergo clonal expansions again. So basically by mitosis and cell divisions, and then they're going to specialize into plasma cells and memory B cells. So the role of plasma cells is to produce and secrete antibody. Memory B cells, the role actually involved in the immunological memory. Okay, so how this antibody is used and role of antibody, we are going to discuss about it next subtopic when we look at focus on this eh? antibody. Are you guys clear so far? Okay, uh, so Stop here a while. So, right, okay. Now, for cell mediated immune response, okay, so involve T cells and APC. So, once activated by foreign antigens, MHC class 2 antigen complex display on the surface of APC, the activated T helper cells secrete cytokine known as interleukin 2. Eh? So, compared to the macrophage, macrophage release interleukin 1. Okay. So this cytokine is a growth factor. So it can actually stimulate the activated T cells to proliferate. So the T cell proliferate means multiply several times by mitosis, give rise a clone of a T cell. So it means the same clone, eh? mitosis, so same clone. So this process is known as clonal expansion eh? by mitosis and cell division. So this T helper cell produce a migrate to the site of infection. And the further to continue, eh? the cytokine also released by the T helper cell to attract the macrophage to the site of infection. So cytokine also stimulate macrophage to carry out phagocytosis more vigorously. So therefore, we form more APC. So helper T cells secrete cytokine to interleukin 2, stimulates the proliferation or multiplying right, or, or divisions of the cytokine T cells that are specific for the particular antigen. So cytokine T cells, they don't carry out phagocytosis. They use toxic chemical, for example, hydrogen peroxide or perforin to kill the cells infected by pathogen. So to become active, cytokine, a cytokine is needed by the cytotoxic T cells. 
Yeah. So fragments of the foreign antigen produced in the infected host cell associates with the class 1 MHC molecule. So because of the co-receptor CD8, now it can be recognized by cytotoxic T cells. So once, okay, they established already, you can see that this is an MHC class 1 molecule and you have the co-receptor CD8. So, so once they form the complex like this, they release the toxic substances, for example, perforin. Okay, all these toxic substances actually can okay, cause and trigger the cell death. So when the dying infected cell take place, they release the pathogens. Okay. So the interleukin 2 or cytokine released by helper T cell also stimulate the B cells to initiate antibody mediated immunity, or we call it as a humoral immune response or humoral immunity. Okay. So in each process, whether helper T cells or cytotoxic T cells, some of them remain as memory helper T or memory cytotoxic T cells so that we can get ready and become active very quickly during secondary response. Now, generally, I always say this, okay, for primary immune response and secondary immune response, primary means first time. Imagine that you do not know how to swim. I throw you into a river. And let you go and find your way to swim. You train yourself to swim. So it takes time. Are you clear? It takes time. But it not means that you're going to success. Like why some people cannot fight with the COVID and die because they, the process might be too long. Are you clear? You're drowning already too long. So you will actually die. Are you clear? Because your immune system actually didn't work properly. Are you clear? So it takes a long period of time. So therefore, you can see that first time, if I throw you into the river, you're going to drink some of the river water because you don't know how to swim, you struggle, right? Same goes to the immune system. Okay? Same goes to the immune system. We need to train them. Okay, they suffer, they take a long period of time. So therefore, you've got symptoms. Are you clear? You get a symptom, fever, pain, headache, okay, vomiting. So you have a symptom. This is what we call it as a symptom. You're infected. What is mean by secondary response? Secondary response basically means that after the first incident already, I throw you in the river, you know how to swim already. If I throw you a second time, you don't need to struggle. Immediately, you can swim. Correct or not? Hey, immediately, you can swim. So with this analogy, you understand that secondary immune response is actually fast. Very fast, you immediately can swim. You don't struggle. Okay, You won't drown in this case. Okay? So same goes to the immune system. The immune system immediately can fight with the antigen. But the question here is, you must have the same antigen. If I throw you into the river, the next time I throw you into the sea, it may not be the same, even though you're swimming. Can you see that? Are you clear? So if I throw you back into the same river or the river, you know how to swim. So this is a secondary immune response. But if I train you in the river and I throw you into the ocean, the, 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 the large ocean, definitely you may, you may die because the first time you encounter it. Are you clear? So secondary response, basically, you encounter back the same virus, same bacteria, same pathogen with the same antigen. Therefore, you know what to do immediately. So memory T cells and memory, again, memory helper T cells and memory cytotoxic T cells immediately become activated. Are you clear? You still, you still need to go for a learning process? You know how to swim already. Do you need to go for a learning? You don't need to go for the learning. So it gives us what we call this secondary response, which is very, very quick. It will remove the pathogen before you actually realize it. You don't have any symptoms. Are you infected? Yes, you're infected. Do you have any symptom? No symptom. So vaccination actually use this as a principle. So the difference here is you are not facing the real infection. Just now I said that I throw you guys in the river, right? Let you die. Vaccination basically what? Put you inside the, the pond, okay? Or if it's inside the, 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 the pool. Maybe the, 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 hey, the kid pool. Are you clear? The water very shallow. You can swim. You're very, very safe in this case. Are you clear? So vaccination use this concept. Are you clear? Train you first and then only dump you into the river. That is what it means by vaccination. Are you clear? So some of us actually, I mean, might get infected by a particular viruses, but we won't know. Why? Because our body already immunized. We all have the vaccinations already. Probably number COVID. 
I mean, different people will show different whether symptom or not. Are you clear? So some may not have any symptom. Why? Because your immune system already get ready to fight. Know what to do immediately. Are you clear? Okay. So now, but if you look at the helper T and cytotoxic T cell memory, they are not so important if you compare to the B cells. So let us look at the antibody mediated immune response here. Okay. So antibody mediated immune response actually involves the activation of the B cells, but activation of B cells require the helper T cells to release a cytokine. And also the protein on the surface of the pathogen, which is non self antigen. So once we activate the B cells already, so these B cells again will have the clonal expansions, yeah, guys? Proliferate and differentiate. So it's, it's first, they must have clonal expansion. So these clonal expansions, okay, will give rise to the plasma cells, will differentiate the plasma cells and memory B cells. Okay, yeah? The pathway for antigen processing and display in B cells differ from the uh, macrophage. If a macrophage and dendritic cells, they can pre they present fragment from a wide variety of protein antigen, whereas B cells pre present only the antigen to which it specifically binds. This is something special. Macrophage actually don't present only one type of antigen because some bacteria, some viruses, they have more than one type of antigen. Are you clear? So they can present what? wide range of the antigen but b cell very very specifically they only presents the antigens that they bind to i will show you guys what it means okay so how they present they present by using class 2 mhc they can be a eh, detected by the helper t cells so the direct cell to cell contact is usually critical for b cells activation so let us look at what is how b cell activation take place and how it differs from the macrophage, okay, antigen presentations, okay? Now, let's look at this, okay? If macrophage, let's say, uh, if this is the pathogen, so this pathogen, okay, with different kinds of the antigen, Okay, non self antigen. Okay, la, uh, it's simply give some. La, huh? Okay, three types of antigen. Okay, so what actually happened here is what actually happened here is so because if you have this B cells, okay, so B cell. So B cells will have the B cells receptor. So B cell receptor is an antibody. So B cell receptor, okay, for example, in this case. Are you clear? Okay, the B cells receptor. Okay, uh, this one is termed as B cells receptor, BCR. And this part is the antigen binding site. Now, after it binds like this, eh? after it binds like this, what will happen here is they will carry out one of the process known as the receptor mediated endocytosis. So it means that through the receptor, they take in the pathogen. Okay? The process is not by phagocytosis, guys, it's nothing to do with phagocytosis. Okay. Therefore, this is a different kind. Okay, there's a different kind of the endocytosis where they involve the receptor. Okay, so receptor mediated endocytosis. So what should happen here? You can see that. So your B cells. Nucleus. And you take in the pathogen. Okay, you take in the pathogen. So I don't draw everything, I draw the ones. Okay, the green color round shape. Okay, so pathogen. Now what actually happened here is the antigens is processed. 
and display. So means that you can see that now, this is the B cells and display. Now, because guys, if macrophages, macrophages have the ability to display any kind of them. Are you clear? Okay. You can display square shape, triangular shape, round shape. Macrophages can do this. Okay. But for the B cells, they only can display the one that they bind to. Okay. Through this MHC class 2 again. Eh? MHC class 2. So now we do have this is a B cells to present and helper T cells now come in. T helper cells. So T helper cells have the B cell receptor, as B cell T cell receptor. How does this helper T cells know? Because helper T cells have the co receptor. Okay, CD4 co-receptor that now forming a complex. So with this complex now, helper T cell can release a cytokine. This is how the activation actually take place. Interleukin 2 again. Are you clear? So once activated, so this B cells now going to undergo clonal expansion. So when clonal expansion take place, some of them will turn into the plasma cells. Some of them will become memory B cell. Okay. You need to take a photo. This is how the activations actually take place. So the B cells activation lead to robust okay, humoral immune response, or we say eh, antibody mediated immune response. A single activated B cell can, can give rise to thousands of identical plasma cells. So means it's not like one or two it involve even thousands of them, maybe because of the cytokine release. So these plasma cells stop expressing a membrane bound antigen receptor and begins to produce and secrete antibody. So some progeny acti eh, of activated B cells become memory B cells, give us the immunological memory. Okay, so you can see that this is the first part. So now you get the idea. First, you have the macrophage presents the antigen. Can I see that? So helper T cell come and then, and uh, this uh, macrophage release the cytokine interleukin one. So helper T cells now release interleukin two. Interleukin two or this helper T cells actually will be picked up by other activated T cells that now can go and bind to the B cells. Can I see that? Are you clear? The antigen presented by the B cells. So then they release a cytokine again. So release a cytokine allows these B cells to proliferate to form memory B cells and also the plasma cell. So the, the plasma cell, plasma cell secretes antibody. Clear? It's not the same. Huh? This one and this one, they are not the same. It's not like they bind and then detach and bind other. No. Are you clear? Because they release a cytokine actually activates the other helper T cells so that they undergo clonal expansion. So some of them actually can bind to the B cells by releasing the cytokine. And then you can see that memory B cells and plasma cells are formed. Okay. So with this, I have done for the cell mediated and antibody mediated immune response. Okay. 